po apologies, folks. Apologies to the whole of Ireland and great to have the whole of Ireland participating. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, Damien, for supporting this. And thank you for coming in from Tasmania, from Botswana and from Canada as well. Good, good, good to have an international audience. I want to share with you a little bit of what I've seen around the world on cluster development. I'm not going to define a cluster, but what I want to do rather is to take you into a few clusters. Food is on our agenda here in New Zealand. It's certainly on your agenda in different parts of Ireland. Let me take you to Food Valley in the Netherlands. It's a naturally occurring cluster. Nobody has invented it. But there is also a clustering initiative and a clustering initiative, a formal intervention that is particularly exploring how do we keep moving forward? What are the holes? What are the imperfections in our regional system? One thing I like about Food Valley, as we see in a place like Silicon Valley, it's a tight bit of geography. It's easy to meet. It's easy to get on your bike to meet others, we bump into each other in a place like Food Valley, in coffee shops, on the streets. I've taken you into Food Valley. I could have taken you into Flanders food in Belgium, or to Jutland and the Danish food cluster. I could have taken you to Rotterdam. I could have taken you to some specialized food clusters in Iceland, or the seafood cluster in Wales that, I, that I've worked with. I could have taken you to a vegetable growing cluster uh, in, in, in France, or a number of clusters in Spain, in Galicia, in Catalonia, in Austria. Or I could have brought you down under and shared with you a bit of what's happening in Adelaide, in Tasmania, in fa the fan cluster in Queensland and Fermentation Tasmania, and great to have Tasmania participating in this webinar. Fermentation Tasmania, based in Launceston, is particularly developing an underpinning technology that reinforces wine, it reinforces vegetable processing, reinforces a number of, in a sense, vertical clusters. Those food clusters in Australia are supported by a national organization with co-funding coming in from this organization, Food Innovation Australia, co-funding that is matched by the local clusters. And I like the way Food Innovation Australia talk about, talk about clustering, accelerating growth, building your competitive advantage by in part working together, moving from silos to working through where are their collaborative agendas. Let me move to Southern Norway. Southern Norway has been a service centre for the North Sea for oil and gas. Over time, in this particular part of Norway, a particular competency has developed in drilling, subsea drilling. There's some 70 companies that are part of this. There is also now a clustering initiative. And I like the way they talk about being an industry-driven clustering initiative for oceans technologies. This is the world center today for ocean drilling technology. It's a center that has developed over a decade, perhaps two decades. Part of what they're doing through the cluster is hunting as a pack, bringing companies together for collaborative collaborative projects where there are common, common agendas, common pressure points within their core markets and also importantly in this cluster, indeed in any cluster, understanding how do we take our competencies and use them to diversify, to use them to pull in additional customers. So in southern Norway, hunting as a pack for offshore wind, geothermal energy. I've taken you to one dot right in the south on this map of Norway. Each of these other dots are other clustering initiatives where these other places have worked through what are we good at doing? What are we darn good at doing in our place? And how do we better engage as a team around that? And each, each of these dots are clustering initiatives that are supported by a national agency, and some of them supported for 10 years. 
Sweden, a very similar approach, with each region working through what are our strengths. And in the south of Sweden, around Malmo, yes, there's a nationally funded clustering initiative, but also now the local government has said, hey, this clustering seems to make sense. Let's engage in four, five, maybe it's six other clusters in southern Sweden. A key concept in Sweden, a key concept around the world is triple helix. And triple helix where it's business in the lead, but it is also government, university, or more, more than university, is academia in a wider sense as important partners. Canada had a new government back in 2017. And as the new government looked around, it said, we're struggling in Canada. We're struggling with competitiveness. We're struggling particularly with R&D. We're struggling with needs-driven R&D rather than uh, and shifting from curiosity-driven R&D to needs-driven R&D. Struggling too in getting academia and businesses in different parts of Canada working together. The response from Ottawa was substantial. A billion dollars being offered to five winners in a competition with five-year funding. So Canada, a bit like Norway, saying this is not quick fix. This needs long-term public funding to change the way that we're working. And these are the five clusters that came through as the winners. There were some 30 proposals that were submitted and, the, and these five selected. And each of them have got good websites if you want to dig further on what's going on in Canada. Let me move from a country to a city. Hamburg's two million people. And I like the way Hamburg, when they're talking about the economic development strategy, is saying there's eight particular activities that pull wealth into our region. Let's firstly focus on those eight and then let's connect the dots between them. Let's connect, let's move into the white space between them, explore where are the commonalities, where can the clusters lever off each other. And what Hamburg is also doing is levering by engaging with other aviation clusters, aviation being one of the, 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 the clusters in Hamburg. And like the way it's in this, it's Hamburg that has taken the lead with considerable or substantial EU support in developing this partnership, which is not small. 450 research institutes in this. Very pleased to see over on the left, Enterprise Island, and I guess that's Shannon that, 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 that is coming in there as one of the partners. Let me step back. I've taken you into a few clusters. Question, why focus on clusters? First point, and this stacks up even in a post-COVID-19 world, innovation clusters. It clusters in places because ideas cross corridors and streets more easily than continents and seas. Tacit information, the information that's in the air, flows within clusters. It particularly flows when we trust each other, when we meet, when we eyeball. Why focus on clusters? In terms of numbers, the numbers is pretty, are pretty clear. It's clear that a company that is based within a strong cluster, such as an aviation company in, in that Hamburg aviation cluster, a company that is based within a cluster is more competitive, grows more rapidly than companies that are located elsewhere in that country. The evidence is pretty clear too now in terms of economic development, that it's clusters that generate more jobs, particularly better paying jobs, generate the growth, the productivity, the innovation. And importantly, to the bottom of my list here, we see startups and startups that over time become scale ups. And an important thing in any community, and as I'm reviewing clustering initiatives, a key thing I look for is do scale ups stay here? Or do they move on? Do they move to somewhere else where the ecosystem offers more sustenance to that particular company? So it's grounding the scale ups, attracting investment, and perhaps 
important for us in New Zealand and maybe for you in Ireland too, attracting talent. Why focus on clusters? My third perspective, if you're an international buyer, the world is becoming easier. Often you don't need to go to too many places. And if you're a buyer perhaps of mobile quarrying machinery, I would expect you know about mid -Ulsa. If you're a buyer of radish seeds, I need to bring New Zealand in here. You certainly know about Canterbury, South Canterbury in New Zealand. If you're a buyer of cold weather testing systems for aircraft, you know about Manitoba, Canada. I was there last year, February time, it was minus 45. You know it's cold, but it's where the world goes. And, and a question then, a reflection for any of our communities across Ireland is, what are we good at doing? Where might we be a world leader? Because today's economies, today's strong economies, are not a little bit of everything. They are specialized, they have clusters, they have competencies. This process of cluster development, and it's a process that we'll get into, particularly in, in the four modules coming up, it's about building an ecosystem. It's about understanding for individual businesses. What is it beyond that business that needs to be addressed to support that business, but also to support perhaps its competitors, its supply chain, its neighbors? It's about building the ecosystem rather than support to individual companies. And as one person said to me, supporting individual companies, public support to individual companies in today's world is pretty lazy economic development. It's actually a lot more complicated to understand what are we good at doing within a region and to bring competitors and others together to work through where might there be common agendas. Three winning ingredients in strong clusters. Talked about tacit information flows. It's about trust. It's about social capital centered on whatever those regional specializations are. And that is helped by close proximity. That's why I use that map of Food Valley in Holland to emphasize the tight location. It's long-term public support. Long-term public support, often including education skills, it's R&D technology, it's export, it's FDI, often it's SME development, it's getting the ecosystem aligned. And one of the most difficult things in cluster development is getting all these players aligned around the agenda of a particular cluster. So it's about teamwork, it's about local facilitation, it's about a cluster manager who comes in as a component of the inter intervention, and the main role of that cluster manager is to build the teamwork. It's to build the teamwork, for example, maybe in your corner of Ireland, between the Davids and the Goliaths, the small guys and the big guys. They need each other. But often the small firms need perhaps the market dominance that the large guys have got, and the large guys need the innovation that is coming from the small guys. But too often, the Davids and the Goliaths don't talk. So it needs a neutral broker often, a neutral facilitator. And this is part of the role of the cluster manager, bringing companies together, whether it's two companies or 20 or 30 companies and working through where are the common agendas and engaging on those. Well, that's where I wanted to get to in terms of just introducing what is a cluster, a little bit there on why they're important and a little bit too on what is the process of cluster development and describing it not as a process of analysis but rather it's a process of relationship building is bringing the different characters together in, in our local zoo and helping them work through where have we got common agendas let me stop the sharing there and I can see some questions coming up on the chat, which is great, but let me move. Hillary, are you there? Hillary, are you able to come in? No. Is there a Hillary? 
Hi, good morning, Ivor. Hilary, great. C c come on in, please. Tell us what you've been doing and love what you're doing because you're a pioneer, really, yeah. building a cluster that stretches from Dublin up to Belfast. Good on you. Please. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, good morning, Ifer and Cloda. Thank you very much for having me today. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So I am the program manager for the FinTech Corridor, which is the primary cross-border FinTech cluster. And we have an ambitious vision for the Dublin to Belfast region while driving EU and UK FinTech through connectivity, collaboration, research and development, facilitating and networking. We were previously known as the M1 Payments Corridor, which was a concept developed by um, the members of the Mill Enterprise Hub. And the initial goal was to facilitate the Northeast region in the Republic of Ireland by adding value to the concentration of e-payments and transaction companies along this corridor. So after various discussions with our brand ambassadors and other industry leaders, we became aware that the M1 payments corridor was too narrow and perhaps too exclusive to the payment sector. And we were in much need of a move to the broader world of fintech. So we focused on the wider aspects of developing partnerships and promoting the area from Dublin to Belfast. So we recently rebranded, but while continuing to pioneer a vision for the region, um, with our, again, we have a unique opportunity to collaborate between the North and the South and position Dublin to Belfast region as the most attractive and accessible location for FinTech on the island of Ireland kind of to your point about Silicon Valley, it's the accessibility that we're really focusing on. Um, so since I've come on board and over the last couple of years as well, um, we're continually growing and developing our competitive advantage to create a strong profile to showcase our services, um, along with leveraging our brand ambassadors to reach new partners and stakeholders and network groups. You know, we do encourage all of our members to become strong ambassadors within their own networks so we can build a successful and internationally recognized fintech corridor on the island of Ireland. We are partnered by a very diverse business environment, so we do offer support at every stage, regardless of your company's position. So as you were saying from the, the David and Goliath stage, um, we provide startup support um, in developing innovative projects. You know, we have access to the academic institutes and experts in fintech. And our goal really is to increase the talent available and employment within the region. Our partners, you know, are accessible and they're very resourceful. And our aim is to facilitate and collaborate with companies and universities north and south and to grow the fintech membership. And we're doing that um, currently by offering free membership from September 2020 to September 21. Um, and our, our aim really is, you know, to build and encourage relationships with our brand ambassadors and offer support at every stage. You can connect and engage with a range of experienced mentors. This can be done through supporting fintech expansion by sharing their expertise, um, lending strategic support and providing critical feedback, um, you know, to facilitate connections to universities and skill agencies to public bodies and financial and technology service providers and regulators on the island of Ireland also. So the issues and opportunities around regulating in both North and South. Um, and we really, our, our main aim at the moment, you know, we really see the FinTech corridor as an integral part of the community in the EU and UK, um, you know, through our businesses and our partner organizations and our all island economic development focus. I love the way in which, which you talked as you started. You said we started very narrowly and then realized we need to, to move beyond the M1 concept because there's a wider range of companies involved or, or could be involved. And I see many clustering initiatives that start with a particular focus and then realize actually there's other things happening on the periphery. I see other cl clustering initiatives that start very wide, perhaps ICT, and then realize actually it's financial payments or it's fintech that really is our core competency, our specialization like the way in which you talked about you're blowing your trumpet 
you're making noise, you're, you're attracting attention. And like the way in which too, you talked about academia coming in as a core partner to, to what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Hillary. Thank you I'm gonna move south to John. John, please come in from Cork. John, you've been a pioneer in cluster development. You've pioneered a number of tools, a number of frameworks that have been used, not just in Ireland, that have been used further afield. And great to see Botswana coming in for this, and, and that, that, that could be one of the people you've been working with in Botswana. A question to you, John. What would help you get broader uptake on your tools? Or in a, in a wider sense, what would help get clustering more firmly on the agenda on the island of Ireland? Uh, thanks, Eifer, and, and thanks, Claudia, for having me here this morning. And uh, I'm delighted to sort of um, come on here and, and speak about clustering and, and the work that we're doing in, in CAT. So to I suppose to answer your question in, in a roundabout way, we have a, we've developed a sort of mapping tool for, for clustering and cluster development because one of the, the most difficult things for policymakers and for companies uh, is, is understanding clusters and how they work. So we, we often hear about, you've given us examples of numerous different clusters across the globe, but what do they look like? Who are the people that are involved? who are the sort of key connectors within those sort of cluster ecosystems. So we've created this sort of mapping and visualization methodology that analyzes the different companies within clusters to understand who are the key players and identify, I suppose, the initiatives that are needed to boost innovation, you know, to create stronger linkages between industry and academia or with local government or identify the particular supports that might be needed to, uh, to help clusters uh, you know, across the globe, I suppose. Um, and, and I suppose you, you mentioned there at the start that um, we've done a lot of work internationally and in, across Europe, and that's because the more developed clusters are, that, that's where they can be found. So we, we've done some mapping in, in the US in Chicago and an ICT cluster there. We've been to Colombia, Botswana and South Africa. So Colombia are, have a, a very, very strong cluster program. I'm sure you were, you were there and have been there as well, I for, and, but they're very, very well developed across a number of different regions. Botswana are starting their cluster development journey and, and looking at the policies that surround that. So we actually have a PhD student who came to us for six months training and now he, he's returned back to Botswana just before lockdown. Um, so, so he got in back safe and sound, but he's working on a number of different um, clustering initiatives over there and, and, and doing some mapping and visualization. And then we've also connected with South Africa and they have a very, very different approach to, to clustering there. And um, we've also ha have another PhD student in, in Belgium, in the Wallonia region, who's working with a, a cluster organization over a three year period of time to sort of understand how linkages and relationships develop and, uh, and connect over, over a three year period and how the policy and initiatives of the cluster can help these companies to, to start going international and further afield. I suppose from an Irish perspective then to bring you back to the original question is what's really missing is education because I think there's, a, there's maybe a lack of understanding of, of what cluster organizations and cluster initiatives can bring to the economy here from an innovation perspective, from a training perspective, from a collaboration perspective. And as you mentioned earlier, getting David to work with Goliath is hugely important in Ireland because of the large FDI sector we have here. So connecting our SMEs with those multinationals through clustering and, uh, and networking is absolutely important uh, and hugely important, I suppose, to our, our development moving forward. John, as, as I look at other, particularly small European countries, places like Denmark, places like Norway, Sweden, that I talk, talked a bit about already, there are cluster programs there, often supported by national agencies, sometimes local agencies, the equivalent of Valonia, the Valonia government that you've been working with in Belgium. 
but I sense without being too unkind across the island of Ireland, we have just dabbled with cluster development. We've been in and out a bit, we've had a few pilots, we've tested, we've played with it, but we haven't engaged in a solid way that I see in almost every other European country. Yeah, I, I think that's that's starting now. I, I think that the process is starting to happen here more in, in Ireland. And there are a number of different supports now that have been launched more recently. Um, Enterprise Ireland have, have launched the Regional Technology Cluster Fund. And, and it seems like there'll be clusters funded across all regions of Ireland through that project. Um, and I believe IDA in their latest strategy are going to uh, to, to work around sort of clustering as well and, and implement a sort of cluster development package there. So it, it, it's great to see those. I suppose what we need is a, an overall sort of national strategy so that there's a, a list of criteria, I suppose, that these, these clusters have to achieve as, as they move forward or, and as they develop. Because if, if everyone does it all on their own without that sort of overarching support, we won't have that collaboration. We won't have what we see happening in Denmark, Norway, Spain, where all of the clusters are working together and, and there's more innovation happening. There's a lot of cross-cluster collaboration and lots more internationalization coming out of those, those particular regions. John, thank you. We'll, we'll move to Belfast in a moment. Let, let me make this, this point. What I see in many European countries, what I see in Canada, is not so much a number of cluster projects, but it is rather at a higher level, how do we change behavior patterns? How do we change behavior patterns amongst academia, amongst businesses, amongst local government, amongst a clutter of government agencies? How do we get them aligned? And fundamentally, the cluster development is not about, yes, we'll fund this project, but not that one. It is in a broader sense, changing behavior. Uh, 